Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I'm working on a Buick Regal. So, hang on and I will show you what I'm doing. Yeah, I know, I should start doing screen recordings, but hadn't done that yet anyway. So, uh, this is a 2011 Buick Regal, and this one is mine. That's the one that I purchased. That's, uh, that's the one I replaced the engine in. So, there is a few things that have to be taken care of, and we are going to do this. Now, Let's start with some of the obvious stuff. Okay, so uh, catalyst is not complete on this thing, oxygen sensor is not complete, evaporative system is not complete, oxygen sensor heater is complete, EGR, BBT. Is complete uh, comprehensive component and misfire. So those have passed. There's no fault. But however, uh, so I couldn't clear the codes. Now some of these codes, I will tell you, uh, they were in there before. My battery died because this thing has been sitting for like a month now. Uh, we've got to check the U0073 fuel controls on bus at the program. And we're going to start with this one right here, body control module. Battery voltage uh, below threshold. That's what I, that's what I was talking about, uh, the battery being low. So, passenger compartment dimming circuit. Passenger window calibration not learned. Okay, that's simply a matter of turning on the key, going all the way down, going all the way up with the window, and it will be learned. Anyhow. Uh, so license plate, lamp sir, open circuit. So we got the in, in light inside the cabin. We got open circuit and open circuit. So we'll, we'll start with those two. Of course, I already know what it is because I know what they done. I wanna, sorry about the camera, but it is what it is. So hold up, oh, wrong one. I'll pause you up for just a second. All right, so first things first, here's the two lights uh, on these Buicks. There is a little tab right here. You push, you pull down, light comes out. Now, let me pause you up again because I just did, did forgot to turn the light on. I was about to say I did something stupid. Okay, I'm back. Right. So these are the little, the lights. So yeah, we have no power over here, all right? So, right there's a the light. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll explain. Calm down. This is what was in it. They have LEDs in it. LEDs are great. Love LEDs. However, uh, they the cheapy ones that they bought on Amazon, they're probably going to go out. And now that brings me to the point of a open circuit code in your scan tool. Anytime you're running LEDs in a vehicle that monitors circuits uh, by resistance, you're going to run into that problem. It's not a problem, actually. You just ignore the codes that it throws because there's not actually anything wrong with it, but LEDs work different. They don't feed back like a regular light bulb, and therefore, uh, all LEDs is going to throw that code. Oh, they don't give you a lot of wire on these things, that's for sure. So oh, that is definitely one problem, uh, one problem solved, and that code should go away. If you look right here in the, in the backup, they have LEDs right there as well. Now, there is some lady who wants to buy this vehicle now, and uh, I'm gonna go through there and make sure that when I'm selling it, I'm going to give them a vehicle that actually works correctly as intended. They don't want them to get pulled over 
because I didn't check the bolts. So, brake lights work. I'm not 100% for sure. You can't see nothing right at the moment. So I'm not quite for sure if the vehicle has to be running. Yeah, vehicle has to be physically turned on. Uh, so, as you can see, I don't want to leave it like that too long. But as you can see right there, those are nice and bright and they are working. I did already charge the AC on this unit. The AC is working great on this this vehicle so that's uh lights are verified right. get you back around i don't have an exhaust hose on this on this vehicle and uh quite frankly it actually smells pretty good uh meaning that it doesn't have a stench, so it does not have a whole lot wrong with it, if, it, if any. And we'll get back out of here, body control module. So, there's another significant difference. I'm gonna show you, show you the difference. This is a up package. Uh, zoom you back in, yeah. I definitely need to start screen recording that to uh, make a lot more sense, but uh, hopefully you can see that from that angle. Let me just do it like this. All right, so I will tell you this. If, you, if you're doing a Buick Regal, this one here, actually has the high intensity discharge headlamps uh they're crap the the lights are literally crap the bulbs are uh way ooh, that was ugly uh bulbs are way too expensive just to tell you that this one here has been changed into a standard halogen headlight they work out of the box in this vehicle you don't have to modify any kind of wiring or anything like that high beams work low beams work blinkers markers the whole nine yards works i don't know all brands will work but these one here uh, absolutely do so we'll clear these coats And that one is going to come right back because he's got LEDs in there. We're not going to chase ghosts. There's LEDs on the inside here. So that is a monitored uh, system and that coat will stay. There's nothing in the world we can do about it other than changing his LED bulb to a standard incandescent light bulb. Okay. So DTC display. One of the things that showed up is the generator L terminal circuit. That code pops up ever so often and I honestly think that it's got something to do with me discharging the battery or letting the battery discharge this thing like it is. It's been sitting. <coughs> Excuse me. Intake airflow performance. P. 1101 and P0101 mass airflow sensor performance. Now, problem I have with that, looking at data, it does not look that bad. So, 
One of the things that I can tell you about this sensor is that he did have a oil soaked K&N air filter in this vehicle. Well, like I said, he did have a oil soaked K&N in here that I pitched it in the trunk. I have since replaced that with a standard air filter because I think K&N is garbage. I'm gonna get a lot of hate on that one, but whatever. I don't honestly don't care. I'm gonna take this apart, so I'm gonna pause you up. I'm gonna get that one out of there. Maybe some dirt in there. As far as the mass airflow itself, I'm gonna take it apart. That's the business end of it. This is the uh, the heat strip and resistors. All right, now I just took the mass airflow and I used some mass airflow cleaner to spray it all out, clean and wipe the housing out. Uh, we're not gonna be done with that alone. Uh, I would like next to make sure that my hoses, I, I don't know if I said this or not, this is a turbo vehicle, I guess that would have been important. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that all my hoses are okay because quite frankly, I wasn't paying that much attention to it. I more or less try to get it done. But let me pause you up and get that hooked up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I can't bring you in there, I don't think. It's going to be hard to see, and I, and I know I can't share that with you. I, I already know that smoke, one of them things that is hard to hard to share with anybody. But if we look past the hose right there, it, there's actually a crack in the hose right there where it's pouring out. That's on the intake side of it. That needs to be fixed. Although that, that is the intake side, but that's enough smoke pouring out of that since uh, these systems here don't put any kind of pressure on it. Uh, that is definitely something that needs to be fixed, especially uh, especially on a turbo car. You know, they, they're going to pull uh, a lot more air than conventional. Well, let's see if I can get to that to undo that real quick and we yank that off of there see if I can't show you what I can't show you. <laughs> I'm going to try to show you what I cannot show you. Now I know some of you are going to say, well that's the intake side of things, that's not the pressurized side, and if you say that, you would be correct, that is the intake side. But even the intake side, should not be leaking. I mean, these things are meant to run a certain way, and this one here clearly not running that way. Of course, the thing would fall. Well, no doubt in my mind it's going to fall. some tab broke off over here that's not too good trying to figure out if it just fell off or not well so much for checking that I said I'm not going to be able to check this Because it's massive leak, it was pouring right out of the side right here, and I'm sure out of the others as well. Oh my God, this cracks! This cracks all in it. Okay, well, I'm gonna turn the camera off, and we'll do a little bit more later. And so, for the automotive enthusiasts among you, I started looking for that hose assembly, and we had to do something a little bit different here because uh, 
This is a, and here comes, here comes a joke. This is a very sob story that I'm fixing to tell you. For those enthusiasts, you know what I'm talking about. For the rest of it, well, <laughs> maybe you'll find out. But anyway, uh, that was funny, by the way. Um, this hose is about 150 something dollars plus tax, so uh, we have to fix it another way with a piece of rubber. And at the end of the day, this is all nicely sealed and it's not to the point where it can slip off of there or anything like that. It'll stay uh, perfectly sealed now the way it's supposed to be. So that's part one of this equation, hopefully solved. So we're gonna fire this little piggy up and see what we can see. But before I do this, and uh, I'm gonna pause you up. Before I do this, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the data pits up on the screen, like calculated air and the actual air. I'm gonna get that up on the screen and see what that says. I'll try to get you in there. Hopefully you see what I see. circuit unplugged a while ago and the car the key was on so the car knows about it the uh, if you notice this I give you a little pointer as well if you notice the fan was running on high that's because the uh, plug for the mass airflow sensor actually had been unplugged and that's a default strategy that's a lot that, that a lot of vehicles have anyway when I clear the codes it cut the fan off because that took that present code away And there's no, no doubt, there was no doubt in my mind that that code is not coming back, although the engine is running. Uh, if there was seriously something wrong with this mass airflow, that code would have popped right back. Uh, uh, vehicle will all automatically do a fuel trim learn. Uh, I can tell you that. So there's not, uh, not much else there to say. We could do just a regular code scan and uh, I need to investigate what's up with the fewer controls on bus and program. Uh, I need to figure out what's up with that. We need to get uh, probably the uh, programmer out and see 
What went wrong? So the dimming circuit, like I said, that ain't gonna go away. LED, remember me saying that. Now, analog brakes I did not clear a while ago. These are, uh, these are old codes. So the one of them will come back for sure. Like I said, uh, the battery voltage did drop out. So when the battery voltage drop out, drops out, you are going to have some uh, communication issues. There's no doubt in my mind. The vehicle does not smell. I don't smell gas in here at all. So I told you, ball of gold, this is to confirm this, what I said is true. That is a permanent, it's gonna be a permanent code. It's not gonna go away because the LED, uh, the LED cannot feed back to the computer that the light bulb is working. So what remains here is basically go uh, drive it. And as you can see, now that the uh, battery is charged up because I still got the maintainer on it, and of course it's being charged now, meaning the L-terminal code that we had is also gone. Now this vehicle has been parked for a long time. It's been sitting for eight months and it has not been driven, period. So uh, the first thing to do is to drive some, sometimes when you have a vehicle like this that's been sitting for that long period of time, you're gonna have to drive it. That's all there is to it. You'll have to drive it, uh, no more, no less. But anyway, I just wanted to make this quick video to uh, bring you all along uh, to tell you what, what some of these codes are and, and uh, how we try to fix them. Now, I'm not going to tell you the mass airflow is not coming back. That may be an issue of a uh, aftermarket mass airflow. Uh, I assume that, let me zoom you out, I assume that the uh, original part should be a Delphi. I think that's what came in them. That certainly does look like an aftermarket part, which could cause problems right from the start. But you hear it, you see it. I mean, the engine runs good, runs really good. We give it a little bit of a rev up tune up. Now, of course, none of that right there is enough to build boost. But I promise you that the uh, air intake, that part, I did fix that part. I'm re-scanning for codes right now since I just revved it like crazy. And everything is still zero. Well, that is actually looking good, of course. Uh, Nothing I say right now really matters until this vehicle gets driven. Now, there ain't a license plate on that thing. I'm not driving it. There's no way that I'm going to drive this vehicle as is. You know, we don't have to sell it. And uh, uh, whatever, there is a lady interested now. She wants to buy it. And I'm going to make her aware of me working on this. And if something comes up, we'll negotiate what I'm going to do about it. You know, I will probably check it out for free because I don't want to be known as the guy who sells vehicles that are not, not any good, you know. I want my customers to be happy whether I sell a car or work on a car. I want them to be happy. So we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.